And so for those who are joining us, today's session of Motivational Monday Talks, um, my name is Anita Batten and I'm the Head of Events at Tankstream Labs. So Tankstream Labs, for those who aren't familiar with us, we're a co-working space uh, for tech startups with a global focus. So we have three offices across Australia, so two in Sydney and one in Perth, and we were founded in back in 2012 by Tim Fulp, who is also the co-founder and CEO of Airtasker. So he wanted a place, um, a co-working space for him and his entrepreneurial friends to work out of and collaborate out of. And that's the Tankstream Labs was started back in 2012. And we exist to support the innovation and growth of the startup ecosystem. Now, every Monday in partnership with Pickstar, uh, we bring to you Motivational Monday. So who is Pickstar? So Pixar is the best place to book sports stars for guest speaking appearances, social influencers, marketing, and much more. They have over 1,500 athletes and sports personalities for any age and any budget. So if you do want to find out more information about Pixar, please go to the website at pickstar.com.au. So what is Motivational Monday Talks? Um, Motiva Motivational Monday Talks is a Tank Stream Labs initiative in partnership with Pixar, where we believe it's vitally important um, in keeping the community motivated during these times. So we place a high importance of staying motivated and looking after your mental health. Um, so every Monday, you'll hear from different leading sports stars and prominent industry leaders and their inspiring stories. So for future uh, Motivational Monday Talks, please go to our website at tankstreamlabs.com for more info. So that's a little bit about us and a little bit about Pickstar. So today's session, we will run as a 30 minute conversation between myself and her guests today. Um, you'll be able to ask questions via the Q&A, which is just down on the bottom of your screen there. And there's also a chat box there as well. So pop in, type in any questions there and we'll try our best to get through um, during today's relatively short session um, for you as well. So. Now, I'd love to introduce our guest speaker today, so AFL and Fremantle Docker star, Matthew Pavlich. Thanks so much for your time, Matthew, really appreciate it, and I know you're a busy man as well, so thanks for joining us today. It's a pleasure, Nada, thanks for uh, having us. Great initiative that uh, Tank Stream Labs and in collaboration with Pixar uh, have come up with. I know when COVID-19 hit uh, you know, a, a few months ago now, we thought of trying to come up with an initiative at Pixar where we, we wanted to onboard new clients. We wanted to do something for free and give back uh, in a social good way. And so, yeah, we came up with a, a kickoff with Pickstar and this is how um, these sorts of initiatives have, have taken off and I'm glad to uh, be working with you guys. Awesome, thanks so much. And I know like in the past few months, a couple months, like you said, I've spoken to some amazing people and that's off the Pickstar platform as well. So um, I can right. definitely vouch for the, the, um, the types of people you have on your platform too. And um, we do have those recordings on our website for anyone who wants to see those recordings as well. So maybe let's introduce yourself um, a little bit there. So maybe just a snapshot sure. of your background and experience to begin with. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I um, grew up in Adelaide. I grew up in South Australia. Um, went to school there, played my junior football and, and all sports there. And then at the age of 17, um, entered the AFL draft system um, as it was back in 1999, which is a long time ago now. Um, and was drafted across to Western Australia to a, a team called the Fremantle Dockers, which I didn't know much about. I knew no one here in Perth. Um, and anyway, here we are 20 years later. I played in the AFL for the Dockers for, for 17 seasons. Captained the team for nine. Um, was fortunate to play, you know, lots of games uh, and just fall short of an AFL premiership. But along that journey um, of playing in the AFL, I was also president of the AFL Players Association. Um, I went to university. I studied a Bachelor of Science and Psychology and then went on to do a... Um, uh, an MBA, uh, so achieved for my sins. <laughs> I think I spent about 13 or 14 years studying part-time at university. Uh, got through a couple of de degrees. Um, and yeah, more recently, so this is my fourth year out of playing competitively in, in the AFL. And, and now I'm um, in the media with Channel 9 and also Foxtel, uh, Fox Sports. But yeah, I've, I've been in, involved with Pickstar from the day dot uh, with co-founder James Begley. Um, and also a couple of other little uh, sport tech businesses, PMY Group and, and Lumen Technology. So enjoying uh, not getting bashed and bruised on a weekend anymore uh, and enjoying my transition out of elite sport into business and the media. 
Awesome. And we'll definitely touch on um, the few points that uh, you spoke there as well today. So we'll talk about AFL, we'll talk about um, your career, your AFL career business, um, and then we'll talk about um, life and family as well. So yeah. let's start off with your AFL journey. So I've got some notes here because it's a lot that you've achieved. <laughs> so you played for Fremantle for 17 years. You were appointed captain at the age of 24 and captain the Dockers World Record nine years. You were the first WA-based player to play over 300 AFL games, ending on 353 AFL games to be exact. You were a six-time Doig medalist um, as Fremantle's best and fairest player, and you were named an All-Australian six times. Jesus, <laughs> what a journey. Um, so yeah. tell us what it was like playing for 17 years and achieving all of that. Like, phenomenal. Um, well, the, and this, so I think when anyone reads out those stats or um, the things that people achieve in life, no one talks about the shitty times. No one talks about the hard bits. No one talks about uh, the mental challenges. No one talks about the physical pain. So I think that's one of the things that... Um, uh, you know, I remember I remember growing up in, in Adelaide and there was a, a guy called Stephen Kernhan who played for Carlton. Uh, he was a bit of a South Australian legend, this guy. And I remember him being interviewed when I was a young kid. And this was, you know, captain of Carlton, uh, premiership player, someone who I, I looked up to. And he said, oh, you know, um, most of the time, not many players are physically 100% fit and mentally they have issues. And as in, like, they have struggles. And... At the time, I just I couldn't get my head around that. I was like, "How can you play if you're not if you're physically sore? How can you play if you're mentally not in tune with with everyone and and, and yourself?" And um, yeah, it didn't really stack up. But it's something that sticks with me because I, you know, to your point um, and, and the stats, there, there's things that I achieved. But um, the adversity and that resilience and waking up every day, not feeling 100, percent not feeling you know ready to smash out <laughs> the day. Um, but, you know, gathering myself, having some routine, having some discipline, having an aspiration um, and having a focus daily to get better, to, to continually improve, um, you know, allowed me to, to traverse the tricky parts and, and allowed me to, when things were really tough, um, you know, get through it all. I think I remember a, a senior coach um, used to say that in AFL footy, you get more kicks up the ass than licks of the ice cream. Now, it's a bit of a crass, a crass term and a crass statement, but I think it's true. And I think it's in parallel, parallel to life in the sense that just because someone achieved doesn't mean there hasn't been some really challenging and hard um, problems to solve, issues to, to work through individually with the team. Um, and yeah, I think that rings absolutely true for not only um, my AFL career, but I think to times at university, I could have thrown in the towel and, and you know, not stuck with the degrees. Um, you know, the businesses that I'm in uh, involved in startups are, are hard. Um, you know, there's, there's lots of things, there's lots of great things and lots of awesome rewards, but it's really hard as well. So um, that resilience piece and, and getting comfortable being uncomfortable is actually is really important. You know, living in a little bit of state of stress and anxiety is okay. Now, we'll talk about mental health a little bit later. So I don't, I don't want to um, get everyone's view wrong here, but having a little bit of stress is helpful. That's the only way people can grow, right? So putting yourself under a bit of stretch, uh, stress, stretching yourself a little bit, having a target and, and trying to aim for that, um, not feeling comfortable the whole time. Um, you know, nothing extraordinary has ever, ever happened by sitting on the couch and feeling good about yourself. You have to put yourself out there. You have to take a risk to achieve. So, And you're not always going to succeed when you have those um, you know, cracks at things. When you do take a risk, you're actually going to fail a lot. So... Um, yeah, look, it's, I guess that's, that's how I see my journey. It, it hasn't been just this you know, graph of <laughs> exponential improvement. It's been lots of issues, steps backwards, learnings. Um, you know, and I feel like I'm, I'm still doing that. Um, having um, been out of, there's my co-founder just trying to call me right now. Um, having, <laughs> having, uh, having been out of the AFL system for four years now and that transition. Um, it's a big learning curve for, for me and the family as well to, to transition out of the game and, and start again. So um, it's a bit of a long-winded answer, but uh, I think it's indicative of, of people who, you know, have a go at something for a long time. Um, it's about hanging in there and, and making the most of your opportunities. 
Yeah, no, and you're right. And you're right exactly when you say, you know, within startup, startup land, it's the same sort of theory. Yeah. Like you, you don't get to where you are without going through adversity, without failing or getting some setbacks and coming back again. And it's a resilience piece that really, you know, keeps a, keeps you motivated and actually makes you successful, succeed in things that you want to do. So it's, it's really, really relevant. But I mean, I want to talk about more about your a bell career so it has been 17 yep. years you've gone through you've had setbacks you've had adversity but you've obviously had some highlights or some learnings as well yeah. so do you want to share just maybe a couple of highlights throughout your 17 year career there um yeah i mean if i think about my ultimate highlights i go to my first afl game um you know as, a, as an 18 year old for, for those people that know the afl um, and living in Adelaide, well, growing up, I um, idolised the Adelaide Crows and their full forward, Tony Modra, was someone who I just, you know, admired so much. And he got traded to Fremantle before I got drafted. And so my very first AFL game, he was full forward and I was forward pocket. Um, you know, so a dream come true to stand next to someone who I idolised growing up. Um, so that, that was a special moment and to have my family there was, was incredible. Um, and then, you know, I think the, the bit that I reflect upon the most is the period where we, um, you know, we'd, we'd sort of bottom, bottom out. I'd been a, a younger captain and learned so much about leadership early on. Um, and then we drafted a whole heap of younger players. And then we grew together as a group um, to play, you know, five uh, final series, um, you know, prelim finals, you know, challenging year after year and ultimately the grand final. So that, that year in 2013, um, was a bit of a challenging year for me because I was injured. Um, Lauren and I had our, our um, first child, our daughter Harper was born. So there's, there was lots going on um, in, in a great way. But yeah, it, it, on the field, we were really up and playing well. And, and the, the, the best games were the, the semi-final um, where we, where we uh, went down to Geelong and, and won that game, won the prelim final here. And then, yeah, had a crack at the grand final in 2013. Um, but it, it was more about the group of people that we that we drafted or that we grew throughout that period. Um, you know, I look, I look now and um, they've sort of moved on either to other areas of their life, but also uh, in the AFL system. And yeah, you, you have great pride of sort of growing something together and, and starting it and, and, uh, and, you know, almost getting the ultimate in the end. So, uh, and then, you know, the, the ultimate, uh, also my, my last game ever, um, you know, we won and, and sort of walking, I had my family and friends and lots of people there. And, you know, that, that, was, that was incredibly special, um, having sort of grown men and women in the crowd crying um, in my last game, which is a strange phenomenon. But uh, it, it was interesting to, to be a part of it. And I guess being a central figure in that when, you know, it, it, it felt kind of, it, I always tried to be about the team. But, you know, at that moment, it was, it was about me and, and uh, and my journey and, and our family's journey through that. So yeah, a couple of special moments there. Awesome, it's great. So that's a little bit about your AFL career. Let's talk about business um, yeah. now. So you completed an MBA whilst playing as well. So how did you manage to juggle both captaining a team <laughs> and also studying for an MBA? Because it's not easy. Yeah, look, I think um, I actually think the study throughout my whole career was important um, in the sense that you know having uh, two things that I, I learned through that. The first thing was being from interstate and coming to, to Western Australia, it actually allowed me an outlet um, to meet other people outside of football, uh, which I, I found really important. Um, it also distracted me from my full-time job. I, um, I found that, you, you know, the AFL, given how much scrutiny there is, like, you know, um, you know, teammates and coaches and physios and strength and conditioning people are always trying to give you feedback and improve you. Um, you've got the media, social media, like, you know, over here in Western Australia, the AFL, it's a bit like anywhere in Australia. If you're a high profile sportsman, there's not too many places you, you can escape. So going to uni was a bit of an escape for me. I used it as a, as a way to give myself some balance and distract me from my uh, normal world. Um, and plus it challenged me intellectually, which which was important. So, um, yeah, it, was, it wasn't easy, by the way. I think you're right. I had a very supportive wife and family to, to sort of you know, get through that period. Um, but just being really, I mean, it's the old, <laughs> the old adage of being really smart with the use of time, compartmentalising, um, you know, being really efficient with, with your time rather than just sort of procrastinating and waiting or, or, or wasting that. So, um, yeah, so sometimes I look back and think, geez, um, I'm not sure how we all got through that period, but uh, it, it's good to be on the other side. 
No, definitely. And I think, do, do you think that, you know, you're being captaining a team and also going to like, like completing MBA and now also looking after you have a few business interests. Do you think that coming from a sports background or sports performance background, did that help or did that um, you know, give you an advantage in the business world mm -hmm. as well? It's a really good question. I think so, you know, there's always the analogies or likeness that's um, compared between, you know, elite sport, high performing sport and business. And I, and I absolutely agree. There's some great things around, you know, the team dynamic and, and how um, there is a value set and how you have to respond to something and how you review and, and do things and, and, and commit. But um, I think there are some significant differences as well. And the main one is, is generally speaking, the guys uh, and people that I worked with when I played in the AFL, it was their absolute passion. It was their one and absolute passion to be in that sport. I'm, what I'm learning is that it's not always someone's number one passion to be doing the job they're doing right now. Um, the people that I'm in, you know, that we employ, the people we work with, whatever it may be. Um, so that, that's been a really interesting insight and to see how you manage expectations and you manage drive and motivation um, with that sort of overlay that, that sits there. And then the second thing I think's um, been interesting to learn um, stepping out of high performing sport is that some of the um, some of the performance stuff is so much uh, more tangible or you can see it you can touch it and feel it in sport because it's right right in front of your face behavior is right there yep. and so you can call it out straight away you can action something you can you know adapt you can evolve whereas business yes there's elements of that but it's not as um, black and white I think there's a bit more gray involved and so um, you know, actually working through the paper trails or understanding why things the way they are with revenue or balance sheets or p l or behavior, you know, values, <laughs> culture, there's so much in that, which is a bit more challenging to see through or to at least identify in the business world. Um, but no doubt, you know, I guess what I learned was that if you set, have, a, have a value set and a set of behaviors and basically you judge and reward and act on those every day, in sporting world that you normally, you may not always achieve success, but you're, you can edge towards a path. And, and look, it's not dissimilar in the business world. If you set about living a certain way and behaving a certain, a certain way every day and try to get better and review that and commit again and do it again, then you know, you're know you a chance to be successful. Yeah, no, there's definitely some similarities there um, with, to, to achieve success in both the sporting field as well as in business. So you, we, you know, you mentioned you had interest in um, other businesses as well, so including Pickstar, PMY Group, and Lumen Technologies. Do you just want to tell us a little bit about each? Yeah, sure. I think um, you gave Pickstar a nice plug, but yeah, basically <laughs> an online platform uh, that connects uh, sports people and media talent with commercial opportunities. So, you know, uh, sports clinics, keynote speeches, webinars, uh, social media ca campaigns, brand ambassadorships, whatever it may be. Um, yeah, I think we've got 1,700 um, talent on the platform now and basically using uh, algorithmic um, methods and technology to make the process of booking talent so much easier and more efficient. Um, so that's that's been, um, we've been at that for a little while now, but uh, it's been an incredible journey and something that I'm really enjoying. PMY Group is a um, technology advisory group who work in sort of more like stadiums and precincts, um, advising clients on what technology they should have, uh, how they can commercialize that technology, um, and also investing um, hand in glove with that, the asset holder. So that, that's, um, that's a bit more advanced, it's a bit, bit more of a, um, a bigger business, but yeah, it's been involved with Paul, uh, the, the founder there for quite some time. Um, and yeah, Luma Technologies is a, um, so I guess a data analytics dashboarding business around um, both high performance and wellbeing. So, you know, having lived in the sporting world for a long time, there's so much information that the athletes input to um, a database. And yet to explain that or to display that, there's no real um, nice way of doing it for the decision makers. Um, and so, yeah, um, yeah sort of been on that journey that's, a, that's probably a bit smaller a bit more in the, the initial startup phase um, but yeah have been enjoying helping the founders um, in all of those businesses 
Fantastic. And I noticed that you have some common areas in each of the businesses that you're interested in as yeah. well with technology and performance. So it's really interesting to see. Um, there is a question here from Josephine. I just want to okay. get through it because I know we've only got uh, just shy of 10 minutes or so. Sure. Um, so Josephine has asked, startup founders are often working outside the comfort zone. What strategies have you used to get comfortable with being uncomfortable? <laughs> um, Look, I think more than anything, it's um, time in the time in the saddle. Um, you know, time in the seat, uh, feet under the desk, whatever you want to term it. Actually, like most things, the more you do it, the more you get better. So, you know, being uh, used to having a state of anxiety or or a little bit of stress and challenging myself daily to to get better. Um, I think I, I don't, as I said, I don't wake up just go, yeah, I want to go and rule the world. I want to go and dominate today. But, you know, you, you set yourself, okay, that, that's a challenging task and let's try to achieve that. Let's try to solve that problem. How do we work through that? And working with people that, I guess, um, continue to drive you and motivate you to, to solve those problems. Um, and, but yeah, I think, um, I think the other part of it is, you know, being able to check out and, and relax and have that balance, right? Because you can't be amping the whole time. You can't be uh, redlining the entire time because otherwise you'll just burn out. So, you know, for me, it's hanging out with the family. Like yesterday, um, you know, we went for a big bike ride, big walk, big play, um, you know, chilled out, um, you know, did some gardening, hung around the house. So just, you know, having those days or having those moments um, is really, really important, whatever that looks like for you, whether it's, meditation reading a book going for a walk catching up with friends you know mm. whatever your poison is right that's just so important to have that balance so um yeah i'm not sure if i've answered that properly josephine but um i think yeah time in the saddle and and, and understanding that um you get better at these things as you go and it's okay to feel uncomfortable um sometimes that's when the, the great and rich stuff comes yeah, and I completely agree. And I think, you know, speaking with various um, startup founders, you'd be amazed um, at the percentage of people who actually are really uncomfortable um, with what they do because a lot of it, if you're not a tech person, but you have to develop some tech, you sort of go, well, what am I doing? But it really is, um, I've noticed a lot of startup founders surround themselves um, with the network or within mm. an environment where, you know, you can lean on the people around you because if you're not familiar with this or you're not um, an expert in this, this person is. Um, and I think and that, oh, sorry. Yeah. No, you're right. Sorry. No, I was just going to, as a, as a young leader, so, so completely agree. And um, that's 100% like, you know, I'm not, I'm not a tech expert. I'm not, you know, good at lots of things, but getting people around you to help you solve those problems is so important. Mm -hmm. I remember as a young leader having this vision, which is just, you know, absolutely wrong in hindsight, but I had this vision that a young leader had to be in, in a footballing sense, a great player, um, you know, perfect off the field, never made a mistake, had all the answers, bulletproof, you know, which is just absolute BS, right? Like it's just completely wrong. Um, and so I learned that actually for a leader to stand up and show vulnerability and say, hey guys, I have no idea what I'm doing here. Can someone help? Hey, um, I got that wrong. I've let you down the last couple of weeks. I've been terrible. You know, actually standing up in front and showing that vulnerability and putting your hand up and owning things and being responsible actually gets other people to jump in and dive into the, the detail, into the hard work, into the areas that you're not so good at. So I completely agree. Yeah, and it's right, we're all human. <laughs> so we all have this, have the same, you know, um, insecurities, things like that as well. And I guess like working in an environment like Tankstream Labs, we have a lot of people who you might have a conversation with someone um, at the coffee machine. You know, you find out, mm. oh, this is, they actually give you advice that you thought, oh, I would have never thought about that. So, um, but yeah, so that's on a little bit on, thank you so much for the question there, Josephine. Um, I'm just conscious that we've only got a couple more yeah. minutes and I do, I know it's been so quick. Um, I just want to touch on mental health because you did talk about that, um, about how important it is for you, you know, to get away, to get some downtime as well and, and mm. that balance. And you're also a patron of, of youth mental health um, charity, Zero to Hero. So can you just tell us about that and your responsibilities yeah. as a patron of youth mental health? Yeah, look, um, I didn't know much about mental health 20 years ago. I didn't know much about it 10 years ago. Um, so, uh, and then one of my good friends um, and, and also a family member around the same time had significant depression and anxiety. Um, and 
it was then that I thought, you know what, I'm not educated on this. I don't understand it. Um, you know, what's going on with my mate? What's going on with my family member? Um, and so from that point on, I tasked myself with trying to understand it a bit better and learn more about it. So, um, you know, it's it's been since then that I've really come to understand uh, how prevalent it is and how normal it is, is probably the best way to, to put it. Um, and so, you know, Zero to Hero are a, um, are a great mental health charity that educate and empower young students, young kids in schools and communities across Western Australia. So instead of targeting people um, that have um, concerns or instead of, um, you know, getting to it too late, it's about educating and empower, um, empowering younger people. So putting in place programs um, initially throughout schools and and, uh, and community camps and programs, so so kids are better educated on this. Um, I think there's a there's a stat that says about eighty percent of if if a teenager or, or if a young person uh, has an issue with their mental health, eighty percent of them will go will turn to a friend. And so for my own kids, we've got three under seven. If one of those three have an issue with it, um, unfortunately, the facts are they're probably not going to come to Lauren and I, which is a little disappointing, but <laughs> at least we can acknowledge that. They're yeah. going to turn to a friend. So I'd like their friends to be educated and empowered to help them through that tough situation, uh, however the best that may be. So, yeah, I've been really um, enjoying that process uh, and, and, you know, obviously putting a public face to it, but also, you know, helping out where I can on my learnings and, and the things that I've been um, you know, I've experienced. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And it's such a good cause because um, you're right, you know, with I, I had a little read about what um, Zero to Hero do. And I think it's a great initiative, getting in there early, letting um, you know, mm. youth of today know that it's okay um, to feel not okay and to actually be able to reach out. So, you know, that I think that's just a great initiative and I wish you all the best on that one as well. Um, so look, we're coming up to the end of the session now. Um, if anyone has any last questions, you've got about two seconds to type something <laughs> in. <laughs> um, but before you go, Matt, I just want to just want to get some last words or just general advice from you. What do you have um, to say for the people listening now and people who will be listening to the recording after as well? Look, I think um, overall, um, it's okay to have struggles and it's okay to fa fail. Um, you know, there's a nice line that, remember my dad telling me that uh, failure cannot cope with perseverance. So if you hang in there, um, you're going to have shitty days, you're going to have tough times. Um, you're just going to get through that. And, and, you know, on the other side can be some, some great reward. Um, I think the, the thing that I learned throughout my AFL career more than maybe more than anything else is that your attitude and effort can is dictated by you. It's not by people around you. Yes, it could be impacted, but you're the one that controls your attitude and effort. And you have to ask yourself the question, is your attitude and effort um, taking you and your team further towards your goal or you know, taking you further away from your goal? Really, is, is your attitude, um, you know, because they're contagious, effort and attitude. If someone's effort and attitude around you is like up and they're pumping out and they're ready to go, you kind of, you know, you're, you, it's contagious. You go with them. So... Are you, um, is your attitude and effort worth catching? You know, is it because it is contagious, right? So, um, I think you know, um, have that attitude, um, that you know, every day you're impacting people around you, um, and yeah, have that self reflection. That's fantastic. That's great. Last words attitude and effort. Have a think about your attitude and your effort and see how it's impacting those around you and yourself as well. So, again, thank you so much for your time, Matthew. Really appreciate it. And, thanks, and thank you to everyone for joining us. And we'll see you at the next Motivational Monday Talks. More information, check out tankstreamlabs.com. And we'll see you then. Thanks again. Bye now. Thanks, Nadia. Thanks, everyone. See you.